Good afternoon, everyone. Four times record snow, Fort St. John's, Canada. Three times record snow, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. The backside of that storm, blanketing Wyoming and Montana. A new article out, Atlantic overturning circulation with the heat variance overlaid. Please remember to subscribe to ADAPT 2030. Taking a look at Fort St. John's, British Columbia, eclipsing the old snow record by four times. Back in 1954, the old snow record was 6.6 6 centimeters. The new record was 23 centimeters on October 1st, and that had increased since that time of this news report. Here's a look for you at the wheelbarrow accumulation. It's that same heavy wet snow that we experienced globally last October, pulling over trees, but this year it's much heavier and you can see the accumulations on the roads. Another headline for you here, affecting travel, unexpected. Headline grabbing across the entire country. Roadways here for you. And in addition to that, Saskatoon and Saskatchewan, east of British Columbia, also had record-breaking snows. On Wednesday, they broke the old record by three times. That was a 100-year record that was broken from 1815. And then the following day, they had another snow record broke that broke the previous record for October 2nd. So the total of this entire drop was at least a foot. So when you're breaking snow records in Canada in October that are four times the original record that had held for over 100 years, you have to ask yourself, has the grand solar minimum commenced? This is a look at the roadways in Saskatoon. Heavy snow removal gear out, still unable to clear the roads. This looks like something out of December that you would see, not October, it's two months ahead of schedule. Now, Manitoba, as well, was included in this whole snowfall. Now, the entire Canadian Prairies area received 1.6 feet, including Saskatchewan and Manitoba. And at the bottom, highlighted in blue there, triple the previous record. Now, Canadian media did have to pick up on this because it was such an event and life-threatening for people who were driving. The sustained winds were 30 miles an hour plus, and then they had gusts up to 50 miles an hour. Notice how the headline, winter storm brings gusty winds. You know, that kind of sustained winds puts that at a blizzard, but they don't use the word blizzard because A, it's October, and B, it doesn't fit the narrative of global warming. So if you look at that light blue that pulled back over the western part of Canada, that dropped snow as well in the Rocky Mountains. Some social media screen grabs here look more like December kids playing in the snow than it would the first week of October. Prairies looking like this. Etonia and Saskatchewan. No barbecue today. Too much snow on this back veranda. These are the conditions from the backside of the storm in Wyoming and Montana. The cold blob looks like pincers, east coast, west coast. But looking back where the cold blob is over Montana, Wyoming, etc., this is the snowfall they're receiving in the mountain areas. And they'll continue to tell you it's because of the ocean evaporation causing more clouds in the atmosphere. Just look over to Sven's Mark. The Cloud Mystery is the name of the film you might want to watch. Cosmic rain induced cloud formation has nothing to do with global warming. So Jackson Hole received another foot plus of snow. These snow warnings have been out for eight days in a row. 75 mile an hour winds, feet of snow, and Mount Baker, 10 feet of snow at the peak. But the ski resorts further down are tallying less. But the peak of that, receiving an enormous amount of snow, 10 feet is huge. But this is what the mountain ski slope areas look like right now. So September 29th, the entire image would have looked like the bottom. Snow-free with the pines sticking out. 
Today, you can see how much snow has fallen over the last week, opening the ski resorts. Now, jumping over to this article sent to me by a viewer, slowdown of Atlantic overturning circulation. This is just talking about how the ocean circulation currents moving around and, and how much heat is transferred around the tip of Africa up the coast into the far North Atlantic in the subsurface flow. It's called the overturning, the Atlantic overturning circulation. That's the blue line. We're focusing in on the red line here. That's the amount of heat that's actually transferred. And then I want to bring you right over here to Ontario, Canada, because they had incredibly late spring record-breaking cold temperatures this year in 2016. So you need to ask yourself, with the matchup, when you see the dips, is there a correlation between the two? Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. The polar vortex is over Asia this year. So look for record-breaking temperatures all across the Northern Hemisphere, centered in Asia, with heavy snowfalls across the United States, Canada, and Russia. And as we get into these later springs, it's going to decrease the growing season. Agricultural commodities, jump over to Trade Genius. Bob will run you down on an entire gamut of how they're going out and trading into the future. Please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030, and I will keep more stories like these coming to you.